Have you ever done a science experiment and wondered what it'd be like if you did it big? I have. <laughs> My name is Phil, and I take your everyday science experiments and do them big. This is Science Max, experiments at large. Science Max! Today on Science Max, we're looking at... Chemicals! 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 Chemicals make up everything around us, and we're finding out which ones you can mix together to make spectacular science. Whoa! Woo! Cutest science ever. Today on Science Max, experiments at large. Greetings, Science Maximites. My name is Phil McCordick, and the name of the show is Science Max, experiments at large. Today, we're taking a closer look at chemistry. Ooh. Chemistry is the science of atoms and molecules, the things that make up all matter, and how they interact with each other. Take, for example, this glow stick. Actually, don't take it, because I, I, I kind of need it. The glow stick doesn't glow until you... Um... The glow stick doesn't glow until you break the barrier and mix the two chemicals, and they start to glow. Huh? Pretty cool, huh? Chemistry! Now, the chemical reaction we're looking at today is the old vinegar and baking soda volcano. But this reaction doesn't have anything to do with volcanoes. It's chemistry. Now, this experiment is totally safe, but I do recommend you get an adult's permission before you do it, because it's very messy. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> First, you're gonna want baking soda and vinegar. These are your two main ingredients, but you'll also want dish soap and red food coloring if you want it to look a little bit more like lava. Now, I like to mix the baking soda, red food coloring, and dish soap together with a little warm water, so all you have to do is add the vinegar. And when you do, this is what happens. And there you go, chemical reaction. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Phil, how much vinegar or baking soda do I use? Well, I'm not gonna tell you. This is where you can be science maximites. Try different amounts. More vinegar, more baking soda, more dish soap. Who knows? Write down the amounts each time you use it and find out what amounts work best. That's called science. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today. Chemistry in all its forms. And of course, because it is Science Max, experiments at large, we're going to max out the vinegar and baking soda volcano. So I'm off to the Center for Skills Development and Training. Come on. Hey, Talina. Hi, Phil. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. This is Talina. She's going for her PhD in chemistry from McMaster, right? Yep. Awesome, which means you can help me max out the baking soda and vinegar. We need vinegar. You grab that vinegar and vinegar volcano. So what happens when we mix these two chemicals? Well, vinegar is an acid and baking soda is a base, and when you mix them, they neutralize each other to produce carbon dioxide and water as a byproduct. Hmm, so acids and bases are kind of like opposites. Yep. So I guess that makes sense. When you put them together, crazy stuff happens. Yeah. Awesome, chemistry. Okay, so I want to use this much vinegar and this much baking soda. What's with the fish tank? The fish tank is where I want to mix it all together. What do you think? Awesome. Maxed out. Okay, uh, let's move the fish tank somewhere where we won't make a huge mess. It's a little heavy with all that. Can we get it? Uh, no, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to take a couple trips. That's kind of heavy. Okay, so we'll take this and that, and then this and, then, and that. No, hold on. I can do it. One, one more. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, I took too much. I took too much. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's good, Ramona. Put it in the... 
Put it in the background. Put the sign in the background. Yeah, in the BG. I love the BG. Chemicals, 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 chemicals. What are chemicals? Are they things you have in a lab in a jar that say chemical on them? Well, yes. But if that's all you think chemicals are, then you need to know your chemicals. Turns out the stuff in the jar is a chemical, but the jar itself also made of chemicals. The table I'm putting it on, made of chemicals. My lunch, chemicals. Roller skate, chemicals. My jacket, chemicals. This guitar, chemicals. My shoe, chemicals. This watch, chemicals. This fish, Chemicals. 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 Me. Chemicals. You. Chemicals. Ramona. Chemicals. No, I said you're chemicals. Chem it. Never mind. This is it. The periodic table of the elements. All matter in the universe is made up of these pure elements. They go together in different ways to make up everything. All matter. Think of it like building blocks. These little atoms are some of the elements on this periodic table. You got one oxygen, two hydrogen, bam, you got a water molecule. One carbon, two oxygen, hey, it's carbon dioxide. Two carbon, two oxygen, four hydrogen, skadoosh, vinegar. One sodium, one chlorine, hey, that's salt. All matter in the universe is just the stuff on here combining into these. And now, you know your chemicals. Mmm, sugar. Let's take a closer look at what's going on when we mix vinegar and baking soda. All chemicals are made of atoms. There's only four types in our reaction. Carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and sodium. When they go together like this, this is a molecule of vinegar or acetic acid. And this is a molecule of baking soda, or sodium bicarbonate. When chemicals react, they switch atoms. That one goes there, this one goes over here, and then this one turns into this, and then what you end up with are new molecules. This one is called sodium acetate, and this one is carbon dioxide gas, the gas you breathe out. And do you recognize this one? Right, water, H2O. Why all this happens gets complicated, but the study of chemistry is all about how molecules are built and react with other molecules. All right, Talina, you ready? Yeah. You're gonna pour all your baking soda in the fish tank, and I'm gonna pour the vinegar into this bucket, because you don't wanna, don't wanna pour them together right away. Are okay, you ready? Yep. Okay, go for it. When you're doing your PhD in chemistry, do you get to do stuff like this? Yeah. Really? Got to do a lot of fun reactions in the lab. Oh, that's, I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> have you ever done this much vinegar and baking soda in one time? I can't say I ever have. There you go, that's what I like to hear. I already put the soap in the bucket so it would mix with the vinegar when I poured it in. Are you done your baking soda already? I am. I'll pour faster. <laughs> oh, it's faster. It smells vinegary. It smells vinegary, it makes me want french fries. <laughs> Okay, Talini, you take this very full bucket of vinegar and dish soap. Thank you. I will take this one. Uh-oh, we still have our third bucket. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll do these both at the same time. Okay, ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Whoa! 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 Wow. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. So the one thing it didn't do, it didn't shoot up in the air though. Yeah, it's because the top is quite open. So you would need to constrict it to get it to shoot up. Oh yeah, because we're using just sort of a square, mm -hmm. a rectangular prism container. We should get something that's maybe something more like our vinegar bottle, right? Because yeah. there's lots of space down here, but then it forces it into a tighter opening at the top there. Um, like a volcano. Yep. And what else can we do uh, to make it even more powerful, to max it out? Vinegar is only 5% acid, the rest is water, so you could try using 100%. So what kind of acid is vinegar? It's acetic acid. So vinegar is actually only 5% acetic acid yep. and 95% water. So you can get 100% acetic acid? Yeah. Can you get 100% acetic acid? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> Why don't we get a container that's sort of shaped like a funnel, like mm -hmm. a volcano, yeah. and 100% acetic acid, and we'll do it again. Sounds good. All right, let's do it. 
Our vinegar and baking soda reaction went pretty well. But now we're gonna try it with a much stronger type of the same kind of acid you find in vinegar. Carefully putting this down. And watch out for the baking soda. You never know when it'll get out. And, well, I guess that's just baking soda, huh? Yeah, that's pretty safe. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> so this is baking soda vinegar volcano version two. We have this differently shaped glass. What do you call this again? That's an Erlenmeyer flask. Why is it called that? It's actually named after a scientist. Did he look like that? Was he sort of shaped like this? No. No? Was he just a good chemist? Good scientist, and I think he designed the glass. Oh, see, there you go. So if you want to have a glass named after you, be a good chemist and design a <laughs> glass. I want to make a fill beaker. So this is 100% acetic acid. Yep. And what's the difference between this and vinegar? Vinegar has 5% of this and 95% water. But this is 100%, so it's much stronger. Much stronger. Can you put this on your french fries? No, I wouldn't be putting it on your french fries. No? As chemicals go, how dangerous is this? It's not too dangerous, but you definitely don't want to be breathing it in, and you don't want to be eating it. Or getting it on your skin. That's why I'm wearing these fancy pants gloves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the acetic acid in this. What's this called? That is a graduated cylinder. Because it finished school. <laughs> so it graduated. Now you're gonna mix water and food coloring and soap all together yep. and pour it into there. It'll help dissolve some of the baking soda, so hopefully it'll react better with the acid. Sounds good. Face protection. Oh. All right, that's good. And now, when we do it, I wanna add the funnel at the end to like accentuate the concentration of, but I don't know if it's gonna go so fast that I won't be able to get it in there, but we'll try it. Try it. Vinegar baking soda volcano version two. Woo! <laughs> 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 Good thing you got the mask. It smells a lot like vinegar. It's really strong. Oh. <laughs> That was pretty good, but what, what can we do to make it even bigger? Well, you could try using a different chemical reaction. Ooh, okay, like what? The decomposition of hydrogen peroxide produces oxygen gas, and so that one's pretty vigorous if you use a catalyst. So we want something that makes a lot of gas so that it makes a lot of bubbles when you put the soap in it. Yep. Great, let's do it. And the sooner we leave that smell, the better, I think, for my, for my taste. Today, we're combining two different chemicals to create a reaction. Sometimes chemicals can combine in a way that makes them very different from how they started out. For example, this is sodium, or Na, on the periodic table. Now, the sodium tablets are in mineral oil because sodium reacts very strongly with water, even the water in the air, or especially the water in my skin. Watch what happens when I drop a sodium tablet into this beaker of water. Very cool and very dangerous. And this is chlorine, or Cl, on the periodic table. Chlorine gas is very poisonous. So, <coughs> so what happens if we combine these two deadly substances? Do we create some sort of super poison? Something more deadly than anything else known to science that causes fear and chaos in chemistry labs all over the land? No, we create Salt, good old normal table salt. These two substances combine to make NaCl, salt. Something completely and totally safe. Chemistry. Oh. We've gone from vinegar and baking soda to 100% acetic acid in baking soda, and now we're doing the... Vinegar and baking soda volcano version three. No longer vinegar and baking soda. No. Nope. What are we using this time? So here we have some hydrogen peroxide. Oh, that's the stuff you use at home to put on a cut, right? Yeah, but the stuff at home is only 3%. This one's 30. So much, much stronger, much 10 times stronger. Yes. And is this more dangerous? It's definitely corrosive, so... Wear your gloves. Corrosive means it could eat your skin. It can burn your skin a little Which bit. is why we're wearing gloves and blast shield. What's gonna mix with this? So here we have some potassium iodide, which is a salt, mm -hmm. and it's mixed in with some water. The most important part of this reaction is the fact that it creates gas. Oxygen which gas. Which makes bubbles when you put in dish soap, right? Yep. 
So one big squirt of dish soap like that. Mix it up. Now we go over to the blast zone. That's plenty. All right. <laughs> now that's a reaction. It looks like there's steam coming off here. Why is that happening? Well, it is an exothermic reaction, so heat is being generated as the reaction proceeds. Oh, cool. Can we lift our visors now? Yep. Awesome. And what's being released? What's the gas that's coming off here? So it's oxygen gas that's being produced. Oxygen. Ah. <sighs> what we want to do is make this even bigger, but first, can we do it again? Sure. Because I have an idea. Hold on. <laughs> I think we should repurpose our old volcano. What do you think? Sounds like a good idea. Okay, so if we put it over here. All right, volcano version 3.5. <laughs> hydrogen peroxide, potassium iodide. Right, here we go. Whoa! Looks like lava. Whoa. <laughs> Look at that. That, now that is a big volcano eruption. Just covered the town. That it's completely, the, yes. That town is gonna be very clean because it's all soap bubbles. It's the cleanest volcano this side of Science Maxville. So I still think we can do this bigger though, no, right? I agree. Um, oh, I know. What if we use some sort of uh, a tube, like, like, like maybe one of these, right? And then we attach it to um, like an air compressor. I think you'd get some height. Yeah, and we go aside. The atom in 60 seconds. The atom is the smallest unit in a chemical element. Atoms are made of three parts. Part number one are these guys, protons. They have a positive charge. The number of protons determines the element. One is hydrogen, two is helium, three is lithium, and so on. The protons sit in the middle here, which is called the nucleus. They sit in here with part number two, these guys. They're neutrons and they have a neutral charge. Now I've got eight protons and eight neutrons in this nucleus, making this an atom of oxygen. Orbiting around the nucleus are these tiny guys. They're electrons and they have a negative charge. I will demonstrate using kittens. Kittens are perfect because just like electrons, kittens are really small. And just like electrons, kittens move around randomly. You never know where they're going to be, but an oxygen atom should have eight kittens or uh, electrons somewhere inside. These kittens are constantly escaping, but guess what? That happens with electrons too. There you go, the atom, a nucleus of protons and neutrons surrounded by randomly moving electrons. Cutest science ever. How do you guys feel? Did you learn something? Huh? Pause up, who learned something? Hmm? Alina and I have made a bunch of chemical reactions, but in our quest to max things out, we've got a new plan. Hydrogen peroxide and potassium iodide create gas. One way to max out the reaction is to contain the gas in something like a tube. We're gonna put the hydrogen peroxide in the tube first. Then we're gonna put in the potassium iodide in the top through a one-way valve. Then we're gonna pressurize the container. When it finally reacts, it will shoot up through the valve and we'll see how high we can get our stream of bubbles to go. But be warned, capping anything and not letting it escape is never a good idea. So we've got a release valve to make sure things work out. This is one of those experiments that's definitely on the list of don't try this at home. Vinegar baking soda volcano version four, hydrogen peroxide potassium iodide. And what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna put it in this tube. Hydrogen peroxide goes in here. And we've got, Talina, do you have the potassium iodide and syringes? Yeah, two syringes full. Two syringes full. About there is good. And then soap. Good amount of soap in there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this off 
and tighten it up. And then we're gonna pressurize the whole system and then we're gonna add the potassium iodide and it's going to be spectacular, we hope. Okay, that's on tight. This is all good, putting this down here. And potassium iodide goes in here. Ready? Puts down, ready? One, two, three, go. And we back away slowly. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, let's check it out. Woo! All right, there you go. Vinegar and Vicky, Soda Volcano Max Stout. Thank that's you, Felina. Awesome. That was great. If you guys want any instructions for the stuff that we've done today, they're all on the website. And thank you very much for watching Science Max Experiments at Large. We kind of need to clean up a lot, don't we? Yeah. We have out here, we have the other room. So tell you what, uh, you get a mop, I will get the hose, and a wheelbarrow for the sud. Science Max is a show where we take small experiments and do them big. If you want to try these experiments yourself, go to our website for instructions. But not all the experiments on Science Max are the kind you should try at home. This one, yes. This, no. Try this, don't try this. A big yes, a big no. I, I don't know how you could possibly do this one at home. And remember, if you're ever not sure, ask an adult. Thanks for watching Science Max Experiments at Large. Chemicals, chemicals. The chemistry of hydrophobic coating literally repels water molecules and doesn't let her. Chemicals, chemicals. Hydrophobic coating, the, the high. Yeah. Chemicals, yeah. Two carbon, two oxygen, four hydrogen. Whoa. Science.